Hello there, Captains! This is Sorbastion coming to you from Naval Action with my fourth video in my series on crafting. In this video, I'm going to be taking a look at the contract system. Now, if you're doing any sort of crafting in Naval Action, eventually you're going to have to get into or deal with the contracting system in this game. So, why don't we start with materials and resource contracts. Actually, there's two types of contracts in this game. One deals with resources and materials. The other deals with ships. And they are two completely different systems. So to start off with, we're going to get into the materials and resources contracts. Now you can view those contracts by going to the shop and going down to your contracts or um, clicking the button to place a contract to start making one. So let's view mine. Okay, so I have a total of five contracts up. And five is the maximum that you can have at any port. So let me repeat that. You cannot have five contracts at one port and five contracts at another port. You have basically five contract slots across all your ports. And all of mine happen to be here in Port Royal. I've got some low grade notes, iron ore, hemp, oak logs, gold. These are all cell contracts. And they've all been completed. And I've got in some mails to show that they have been completed. See, contract fulfilled, contract fulfilled, contract fulfilled, contract fulfilled. So these are all telling me, oh, uh, that's a ship contract. Never mind. There we go. Yeah. So you successfully sold items from your contract. So once your sell contract completes, you will get those mails. You don't get mails for putting material and resource contracts up though. Now once you've put them up you will be able to claim them. See I've got four that I can claim here that are all finished. So let's go and claim these. Yes I want to claim that contract. Yes I want to claim that contract. Yes, I want to claim that contract too. Oh, the money. <laughs> yes, and I want to claim this contract. All right, but I'm not going to claim my gold contract because I haven't sold anything yet. Now, aside from the claim or cancel contract, you also have the delete contract. When I claim and cancel, what ends up happening is you get the unsold amount of materials or resources back and whatever gold that you've acquired from selling them. If you click delete contract, then it just deletes everything. It deletes whatever gold you've got and it deletes whatever items you still have left that are unsold. Now, why are these why are there two different buttons? Well, it all has to do with being able to access your contract. These contracts have to be managed from the same port that you put them up in. So I can't put a contract up in Port Royal and then sail over to Carlisle and expect to be able to manage this contract. Well, to claim or cancel it, I should say. I can delete it. Now, deleting it remotely is very handy in the case where you have a contract in a port that is no longer accessible. Like, let's say it got taken by another nation and you absolutely need to get rid of this contract because you've already put four others up and you want to put a fifth up and you can't because you can't get into that port to claim this contract. You can just straight up delete it. That's why the button's also red, you know, because if you delete your contract, you're going to lose everything.
Now you can delete your contract from any port, but to claim or cancel it, you have to be in the same port that the contract was put up in. All right, so let's talk about how to put up a contract. There's actually two different types of contracts you can put up. You can put up a buy contract or you can put up a sell contract. So, oops, okay, let's go to buy. So you can buy basically anything that's on this big list. And now it comprises basically materials and resources only. You cannot buy upgrades, nor are you able to sell upgrades through this contract system. It's strictly just for materials and resources only. So for upgrades, you have the choice of selling them just directly to the shop or you have to trade them between players for you know whatever you want to sell them for all right so anyways back to our materials and resource contracts so if I wanted to buy say some cables and housers I just click that there's a price here I have no idea what the price is and I'm not gonna put this up anyway so let's just put it at 120 and then you can move the slider to adjust how many you want to purchase now, if I wanted to buy 1,000 of them, I need to have uh, 120,000 gold, you know, in my bank in order to make this contract. And I also need to pay a small fee for placing the contract. For resource and material contracts, for both buy and sell, this fee is 5% of whatever the total is. The total you're buying or the total you're going to make from selling. Now, I'm not actually going to put this contract up because I don't want to buy any cables and housers, but I do have some things that I want to sell. So, I do have some iron ore that I want to sell. And I have roughly 1,500 of it. So, the current price is 270. So, we definitely don't want to sell this for... Mm, 120 let's try putting it up for maybe 255 hopefully it'll sell fairly quickly if I put it up at that price so here I hope to make nine three hundred and ninety six thousand and fifteen gold from it of course to put that contract up I have to pay the five percent fee which is nineteen thousand eight hundred so when it actually comes to putting up contracts and you're doing large quantities especially in a place like Port Royal, you have to expect that people are basically going to come in and undercut you to get or to sell their materials or resources faster. No one's going to come in and make a contract and try and sell their, their iron ore for more than what you're listing it. At best, they'll list it at the same price, but that's very uncommon and most of the time they'll just list it at a lower price in order to get it to sell because everyone wants a quick turnaround. So it actually doesn't really make a whole lot of sense for you to list a huge quantity of iron or of whatever resource or material you want to sell because in the end it's very likely that you'll only end up selling a portion of that. So actually in my last video I did a big traders run and I ended up getting something like 3000 iron ore. And what I did was instead of, you know, just making one contract to sell all 3000, I sp basically split that stack of iron ore in half and just sold half of it. That way I could be guaranteed well, not guaranteed, I'd have a better chance that all that iron ore would sell because it's a smaller quantity at that price. And then I could come back later and put up another contract for iron ore at a different price without having to repay this fee. Like without having to go in and claim or click the claim slash cancel button, you know, get whatever profit I got from whatever sold plus, you know, the unsold iron ore, and then having to relist that again. So I think it's more efficient if you basically try to sell in smaller quantities. And by small quantity, I basically mean anything really under, you know, 2,000 to 1,500. If it's over 2,000, then you probably want to start making separate contracts.
Anyways, I'm pretty sure that at 255, I'm gonna sell all of this, so no problem. So let's go and place contract. Good. Yep. That's all good. I wanna I wanna do that. So we click confirm. Placing contract. Good. And now if I go to refresh, yeah, see now my order's up there, and I can check that by clicking this I button. And uh, here we go, yeah. See, I'm right here, Sorvastion, and there's my order. Fantastic. All right, so now you might be wondering why the highest buying contract is 180, yet the price is 222. Well, it has to do with the fact that this port consumes iron ore. And the port price for iron ore is 222 gold per iron ore. Now, these guys, in my opinion, they're basically never going to get their buy contracts fulfilled. The reason for that being is, look how much iron ore the port is willing to buy. It's willing to buy 26,616 iron ore. That's quite a bit. Now, for the port to kind of be satisfied at this price, enough players would have to sell iron ore to the port at 222 gold each. And enough players would have to end up selling a combined amount of 26,616 gold or iron ore. Now, that usually never happens because, as you saw with what I did, it's way better, well not way better, but it's better to just put up a sell contract and sell at a higher price. Why would, if the highest sell price, which you saw earlier, was 270, why would I sell all my iron ore for 222 gold each when I can sell it for 255? And I can make more profit that way. So unless this, the price of sell contracts gets forced down to basically lower than the price that the port is willing to sell at or buy at, no one is ever going to f to satisfy the port's request for iron ore, which you know is twenty six thousand. Therefore, and mind you, this value resets every day. Every day at downtime, I think, it resets. So you basically, like the port is requesting 26,000 or more iron ore every day, which I don't think anyone's actually gonna like be selling that amount of iron ore to the port at, for. Which means, basically, these buy contracts are never going to ever get filled because no, like, the port will always be buying at a higher rate because it's never going to be, it's never going to get full. It's never going to be satisfied. Its request will never be, f will never be fulfilled as no players are really selling for that amount. I mean, it would have to take a big change in the way the market's going, you know, to force the price of iron ore below 222 gold. In which case, then, yeah, people would start selling to the port because that's the highest um, amount that you can sell at. In which case, then, yeah, that would get fulfilled. And then, you know, people would be able to start buying at, like, the next highest price. So that one would get satisfied and then that one. But, you know, in my opinion, with the way that the current meta is in the game, that's never going to happen. So my advice when it comes to setting up a buy contract is if you're buying in a port that consumes a certain resource, you need to set your contract's buy price higher than what the port is willing to pay. Otherwise, you could be sitting around waiting for forever. Now, that's not a problem for materials because no ports don't buy and sell materi materials. They only do it for resources. So that's resources are the only... Uh, items in the game where this kind of applies. Materials, you don't have to worry about that. You can set basically any price you want. Now, let's go back to resources.
because resources are produced by ports and consumed by ports. So contracts are a fantastic way to get resources from a port or from even from other players at a, a certain port. And it's a great way to sell resources to other players. Now, if you watched my video about trading, you'll know that I talked about how if ports produce certain resources and you set up a buy contract at a price higher than any other competing com buy contracts, then as soon as that port produces some, it'll just die immediately sell it to the highest bidding buy contract. Now, these contracts, like the contract that I put up here, ooh, look, see, I've already sold some gold and I've already sold some iron ore, fantastic. This updates in real time, by the way. Now, these have an unlimited duration, which is fantastic. So you can only have five of them, but they have an unlimited duration, so you don't have to worry about that. Ship contracts work a little bit differently. Now, once these complete, I will get a mail, like I showed you before, to let me know that I need to come back to this port and basically manage these contracts and collect my profits. All right, so let's close this. And let's go over to ship contracts because ship contracts are a little bit different. So um, you see here this basic cutter, there is no name next to it. That means that the port is selling this ship for zero gold. And then you see me here, <laughs> all of these. So you can view your ship contracts by clicking on the put or view ships on contract under the ships tab. And you can see I've got a whole bunch of traders link. Well, they disappeared. Oh, there we go. Okay. I don't know. It's a little bit glitchy. So I have a whole bunch of traders links on sale because I wanted to find out if there was a maximum number of ship contracts that I'm allowed to have. And I found out that there's not. So far as I know, you can have an unlimited number of ships for sale. Or maybe at least until it gets down to the bottom of this window. I don't know. I wasn't willing to put that many ships on sale. What I did was I just went and bought a whole bunch of Traders Lynxes and because they were cheap, and then I put them all on sale to see how many ship contracts that I could put on sale. So I actually, now here's the thing, okay. Ship contracts work a little bit differently. First of all, they are limited to nine days. After nine days, if your ship hasn't sold, you get the ship back minus your fee that you had to pay. So yes, you also have to pay a fee to put ships up on the market. Now this contract only lasts for nine days. So I actually want to go and remove this ship from sale because I want to show you what it looks like when I put a ship up. Yeah, let's take that out. Okay, cool. Now I should, yeah, there we go. It's, it's finally updated. All right, so here's my trader's links. Let's put this thing back up on sale so I can show you what this is, what it, this looks like. So I've decided on a price of 5,000. I was just testing that. If I wanted to increase this price to 15,000, notice here that it will cost me 1,500 gold to put this ship up for 15,000. So the fee to put a ship up is 10% not 5%. So ships are considerably more expensive to put up or ship contracts are considerably more expensive to put up than material and resource contracts. And no, I don't want to do that. We're just going to put it up for 5,000 because I don't want to waste too much of my money. Okay, put on sale. All right, so to put a ship on sale, it cannot have any upgrades or cannons or items in the hold. Well, hold on a second. Let's close and let's go and let's take a look at this trader's links. Okay, so what they mean by upgrades is you're not allowed to have any regular upgrades. However, a ship that you put up on contract on the market can have permanent upgrades. No problem there. So you're allowed to have permanent upgrades, just no regular upgrades, no cannons, and nothing in the hold. And this upgrades thing over here, it doesn't count either. And you are allowed to have health kits. 
So you're allowed to have health kits, just not allowed to have cannons. The way you do this, again, you want to click this button here. There is a way to to try and list it for here, put on sale, but I found that this is kind of glitchy and it'll think that like there are upgrades still on it when there's really not. So I just come to the ships tab and I come down here and then I can select it from the list. Yeah, there we go. And I'm going to put on sale. Yes, are you sure? I am definitely sure, confirm. And the list is going to update and there we go, it's on sale and it's going to be on sale for nine days until this expires or someone buys it. Now, unlike normal contracts or resource and material contracts, I actually get a mail every time I put a ship up. See, I just put my ship on sale. I got a mail saying you successfully put Trader's Links on sale in Kingston Port Royal for such and such a gold, which is good. A little, kind of a little bit of mail spam. However, when this ship sells, I don't have to come back to Port Royal to collect my profits. Instead, what happens is you get a little mail saying your ship is sold and the profits from selling your ship get deposited directly into your bank account, regardless of where you are. Now, if only they did that for the resource and material contracts, you wouldn't have to go back to the place where you initially put it up, and it would be much more convenient. Close. All right, let's go back to the shop. So those are the two different types of contracts in Naval Action. You have your ship contracts and you have your materials and resources contracts. Like I said before, upgrades, consumables, cannons, there is no way to make contracts for those. There is no way to put them up on the market for custom prices. You can only sell these directly to the market. See here I can go to upgrades and I have some upgrades here so I could sell my rum rations directly to the market but I cannot put up a contract to set a custom price. These prices are set by the game and if I want to make a different price then I have to go and trade directly to other players. This also kind of sucks because it means that you have to advertise it in nation, nation, clan or port chat so you know the people that want it just have to have to be on at the same time as the people who want to sell it and then they happen and they sh and they have to be looking at the same chat at the same time to see the advertisement it's kind of a pain in the butt I wish that there were contracts for upgrades cannons and consumables because that would be really nice maybe they'll do that in the future but so far the only thing that you can make contracts for are materials resources and ships those are the only things in the game that you can set custom um, custom sell prices for. And in the case of ships, you cannot set, set you cannot create a buy contract. You can only sell ships. So you can't create a contract, say for a Santisma that you want to buy, and say I'm willing to set this price for it, like you can in Eve Online. You can only the sellers who have the ship are able to actually make a contract to put it up on the market and they set the price at whatever they're willing to sell. Which is a lot different from the materials and resource contracts where you can create both sell contracts and you can create buy contracts. What does that allow you to do? Well, like I said, you can buy contracts at a port or you can buy resources at a port from a port at lower prices and then go elsewhere and put up a sell contract to sell to other players. Or you can do what a lot of people do in Port Royal here. You can set up a buy contract for more than the port is willing to pay, get those resources and then sell them at a higher price later, which would be called flipping. All right, so that's basically everything you need to know about how contracts work in Naval Action. I hope you liked the video. Next time I'm going to be looking at shipbuilding, so I hope you tune in for that video. If you liked this video, remember to click like and subscribe to my channel for more videos about naval action. Until next time, take care and happy sailing.